Hey, 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 guys, Alton B. Pelzi here, your voice manager. Oh, my goodness. So can, can we be honest in saying, when we look at no matter what we've endured over the last year, there have been some things that got us off track. There have been some things that felt like a car wreck in our lives, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our businesses. And so I, I, I'm excited about this particular episode because I know that from the messages that I've been receiving from you guys, this is going to be one that will inspire you. Like this is going to be the one that you may not, you may or may not take notes, but you're going to listen to it multiple times because there's going to be some gems and some nuggets that really hit home for you. And that part means everything for me because as an entrepreneur, sometimes I just need to see somebody make it. I need to see somebody get to the other side to understand that I can do it too. And so with that being said, I'm excited about my guest for today. Hello, Art, how are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. I am excited to have you on as a guest today. Art, right, let the studio audience know a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into today's topic. Okay, well, my name's Art Danick and about 30 years ago, I put together a draft uh, for a book uh, in the name of the the book it, it's on amazon and it's called as fate would have it now i'm an engineer uh or i was at the time an engineer for exxon and uh i was involved in a horrific race car accident uh the car rolled over uh, three times broke apart caught on fire and while it was rolling over, it was only taking moments, I actually relived my entire life. And the events to me were real. And it was kind of like you would think it was, uh, you know, judgment day in the grand jury uh, to determine whether, you know, you were going to go on out of this world to someplace else. And if you were where you were going to go, um, so that, and the decisions that I made reliving those events, um, I understood why they were made. And I understood that some of them were made by free choice. Some of them were made by fate, but they were all done to get me to where I was going to be next. So one of the things you got to, people got to understand is don't dwell on your past mistakes, okay? Uh, they're there usually to set you up for something that's happened to you right now or is going to happen to you in the future. Uh, and if you think about the things you've done that you thought were wrong and you say, gee, if I could go back and change them, well, you would have an entirely different life today. You wouldn't have the same family. You wouldn't have the same friends. You know, your kids would be different. You might live in a completely different state. Anyway, your life probably would be completely different. And you really don't know if it would be any better or any worse. So... If it's okay now, enjoy it and realize that it was a series of events that got you there. Now, um, the, like I said, here's a, a model of the race car. I was in, it's a dragster. It's one of those things with those big wheels in the back and the small wheels in the front. And uh, it, uh, I blew a left rear tire going about 140 mile an hour and the car turned over, rolled over three times and broke apart. And I don't know, you can see a picture of the car. It's, it's all kind of busted up. And uh, anyway, like I said, I caught on fire. I lived through it and I relived a lot of my life during those experiences. And when I got out of the hospital, um, I started writing notes about what had happened, the events that I had relived. 
and uh, and like I said, that was like 30 years ago. And I just put it together um, a couple of months ago. Actually, a book came out on Amazon uh, in October of this year. Now, what some of the things that I learned? First of all, never ever let anybody tell you no, you can't do something. All right, because they're wrong. And, uh, and I'll go back and I'll give you an example. And the other thing is never let the fear of failure stop you from pursuing your goals because the worst that can happen, the worst can happen is you might fail at it, but there's going to be another chance. Uh, you, might, you might get fired from a job, but you're going to maybe find a better job. So don't let fear stop you from doing something. Now, I'm going to tell you like a story that uh, when I was in high school, uh, it was my senior year and it was a couple of months before graduation. And remember, this is um, 1959, okay, before a lot of you were even born. Just a few years ago. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Just a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, anyway, the, the New Jersey Department of Education had come up with a bunch of tests and they were going to tell all the students of our high school by these tests what they should do that, you know, when they graduated in a couple of months. All right. And they spent a lot of money developing the tests. So they gave us three days of testing and they did things like, you know, put a square peg in a square hole, pick the difference between a plier and a screwdriver, add a couple of numbers together. They tested everything they could test. And about three months later, uh, they came into our class. And we had about 120 students in our senior class. And they set up all these little offices. And then they, they called you into the office you, by yourself, OK? And, and they said, hi, I'm Mr. Jones or Smith or whatever her name is. And uh, um, you know, we've got the results of your test. And uh, your name is, uh, what is it? Zartanek. Oh, OK, here's your results. Um, they said, you know, we've evaluated all your tests and uh, we think you're best suited to be a plumber or a seamstress. And I said, plumber or a seamstress? I'm, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to be an engineer. No, you are not going to make it. You don't, you don't have the qualifications to become an engineer. And I said, well, I, look, I, I'm doing pretty good in my high school class. Actually, I'm, I'm number one in my high school class, and I, and I really think I can be an engineer. Uh, you can't. We, we really advise against it. You, uh, and I said, uh, I, I don't believe you. I'm going to try it anyway. <laughs> so, you know, I went to college, uh, studied mechanical engineering, and uh, actually graduated number one in my high school class and not the high school class but in college as an engineer as a number one engineer okay so they were wrong but you know i think they tried because during the next five or six years i i went to work for exxon they would send a representative up there uh to speak to my supervisor and find out how this idiot is doing because he shouldn't have been an engineer and uh, <laughs> they were surprised to find out that I was top ranked I was leading a group of other engineers that had more experience than me and I don't know I, I hope they went back and changed their tests because otherwise they probably discouraged a lot of people and it wasn't just you know, for engineers, uh, it was probably other people that thought they were going to do something and then listen to them, uh, you know, like they might have told, a, a, a guy. in fact, they did, they told a guy that was a friend of mine uh, uh, that he, he, he couldn't become a policeman. And they told him that, you know, he should work in the grocery store, A&P grocery store at that time. He, he became a policeman and actually he became police chief. Um, so I'm saying, don't let somebody tell you, no, you can't do something. Uh, I'll give you another example. When I was, um, uh, getting out of grammar school and I wanted to go to high school and, uh, there was two high schools in our town and it was Atlantic city, New Jersey. And, uh, a lot of my friends were going to one of the high schools, the Holy Spirit. And, 
um, you know, I went in, I went there and I saw the principal and I said, okay, look, I want to go to your class and I, I want to take, you know, college prep class. And for some reason or other, she said, no, you really should take, you know, um, there was three courses. One was like a, a technical option. One was like a homemaking option. And the other was college prep. And I said, I, I want the college prep course. And she said, oh, the courses are too tough for you. <laughs> you just, you, look, we'll let you start in it, but you know, after a couple of months, you may have to switch over to the, to the technical class. There's nothing wrong with a technical class. I'm great mechanic and stuff like that. I, okay, what happened? I graduated number one in the high school in the college prep class. You, so again, you, you can't list, let somebody tell you, no, you can't do it. Um, when I was uh, an engineer, I spent about uh, 30% of my time traveling around the world for Exxon and solving their problems. And uh, one day my boss calls me in and he says, Art, he says, uh, uh, Charles, I call him La Grand Charles, he's a Frenchman, and he was stationed in, in uh, Belgium, okay, but his, he was doing, he had a team together in a plant in France, uh, sorry, in Germany, and it was doing very, very poorly. Uh, they had to shut down the reactors every week. It was costing millions of dollars, and this team had sent there, and the team had spent, I don't know, about three months studying it and getting no place. But now it was summertime. And summertime for the French, it's vacation time, okay? <laughs> I don't care how bad your problem is. It's summertime. We're French. We're taking vacation. I had to go relieve him for vacation. Uh, of course, I was a little bit upset. I said, I'm not relieving that guy for vacation. Well, you got to do it. So I get there, you know, fly across the Atlantic. I get there after, you know, taking trains and everything else. I finally get to the, to the plant. Um, it's like 9.30 in the morning. And he says, well, I have a set. Uh, we've got a meeting set up at um, 11.30 with the, the, the plant manager and the manager of all the departments. And I will explain to them that we have this very difficult problem and that I will solve it when I get back from my vacation. But in the meantime, you know, you will be there studying it and gathering data for me. And I said, well, Charles, I think, look, just, just give me a chance. I want to go out to the plant. I want to see the unit for myself. I want to take a look at the data. I went out there, out to the plant. Um, and uh, I looked at the data, I looked at the, the cracking reactor and that's used to make uh, raw materials for, for plastics. And I just took a quick look at the data and I said, you're, you're all wacky. <laughs> what you're studying is all wrong. So I go to the meeting and La Grande Charles, I'll call him that, he, was, he looked like a little elf, but you know, he stood up and he started telling everybody, you know, this is a serious problem. We're studying there for three months. When I get back, I should solve it. And I said, wait a minute. I said, look, you got a problem, but it's not even in the area you're looking at. It's in another part. Oh, no, can't be, can't be. We, I know what I am doing. You, you, you know nothing. You, you get off the airplane and you think you know the answer. Well, I said, yeah, I'm sorry. I know it. And I said, look, to, in order to prove that I'm right, I said, they're shutting these damn things down every week. We got to shut it down now. And we've got to cut apart this part of the unit where I thought the unit was the problem was. So the manager says, oh, you know, D. Nick, he says, that's going to cost us a lot of money. We can't supply our plants other places in the world. And I said, look, you, you either shut it down now and you know, take your losses for a week or so, or continue to take them for the next couple of years. Well, yeah, that night I went to sleep, and of course I was scared as hell. I, I, fear set in. What the hell if I'm wrong, you know? And it was, I could have been wrong, but I didn't think I was. So the next day they 
got the unit shut down and they start cutting it apart. They make the first cut and there's nothing. I said, oh my God, what did I do? Uh, they, I, they made another cut and, to look inside and nothing. I said, look, one more, please. We cut it apart. I was right. The thing was basically full of what you would call garbage. Okay, and that's why the unit wasn't working. Um, then, uh, you know, they uh, they had to call. Uh, actually, it was actually before they began to cut it down. They I, they had called the uh, the manager managers in New Jersey and said that you know this guy you sent us wants us to shut the unit down and cut it apart. And they said to me, "You only been there a couple of hours. You." you <laughs> You're crazy. You go Sorry, travel, right? down and lose a million dollars or you come in within a couple hours. And I said, yeah, I know I'm right. They said, well, you know, if you're not right, when you come home, you're going to be looking for another job. And I said, look, I know I'm right. And I was right. All right. So I, I guess what I'm telling people is don't don't give in to your fears. If you think you're right, stick to them, do them. And you may be wrong, but there's another chance coming along someplace else. Um, so I love that you said that because from listening to your story, you have to be your own advocate sometimes. You know, there's, there's always going to be the naysayers. There's always going to be the ones that, you know, tell you that you can't because they have it. Right. You know, they yeah. haven't seen it. And so that part stood out so much. And even when I think about the fact, like a speakeasy podcast listeners, you guys have to understand art has won a who's who achievement award. Art has, after the accident, learned how to fly a plane and became a pilot and then built a airplane. So you have to understand when I say you got to be your own advocate, there are so many great things that we miss out in the world when we when we don't, you know, understand that whatever is behind us is behind us. And if we focus on it, we miss what's truly ahead. That's exactly right. You know, I, I got the uh, Exxon's most valuable patent award twice and nobody else has ever gotten it twice. Some people have gotten it once. Uh, and the, like you said, I got the Marcus Who's Who's Lifetime Achievement Award in Engineering. Uh, I went on and after I retired from Exxon, I uh, started a boat company and we built boats. Uh, companies called American Offshore and they're, you know, performance pleasure boats. Uh, I've done just about everything. I, like you said, I built an airplane. I crashed an airplane too. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, I, you know, I, I've been in a lot of accidents, but I recovered. <laughs> and, yeah. Okay. So again, my advice to people is just think about everything that has happened to you. And it's probably happened for a reason. Maybe you made your decisions, you know, they were made by free choice and maybe you think they were wrong but maybe they were made by fate to set you up for something better. I love that. The speakeasy listeners, this is why I was excited about this episode. I want you to hold on to what Art just said. Maybe they were, you know, by choice. Maybe they were, you know, by fate. Maybe they were, maybe it didn't work out. But oh my goodness, look at where you are now compared to where you were. And there are so many things that you've learned along the way. Like that is so powerful. There's so many, and I know Art, that there are so many lessons you've learned from flying a plane to racing cars. I'm like sitting here like a little kid, just excited. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know how much more time we got and stuff like that, but, you know, there's um, a lot of other stories that um, I could tell you that they're, they're all kind of in the book and, 
you'll you'll once you read it you'll kind of understand uh, that everything happens for a reason don't don't let somebody stop you from doing pursuing your dreams I mean if you think you want to start a business and everybody tells you well you know you shouldn't you can't do that say hell I'm gonna try and do it just try you might damn well succeed um so you know oh. I'm, I'm sure when you started your podcast do people tell you oh you shouldn't do it you know you know you're gonna fail it ain't gonna work out nobody's gonna listen to you um you know i, I i'm sure of that and i'm sure you probably had a lot of fear about it and said well you know maybe i shouldn't do it but you went ahead and did it and you know you're a success at what you do and it's you pushed yourself to do it even though people probably told you i'm sure you had people tell you yeah go ahead you're going to be great but i'm yeah. sure there was a bunch of people that's more people that said no don't do it they're stupid yeah you're just not the right type of person you you know no yeah you got the story okay yeah and you know what it's when i look back now i a lot of the people that were telling me no don't do it were people that again yeah they hadn't done you know some significant things in their life they were holding back in their life we kind of project that on other people like conversations like these are amazing because when i hear what you've accomplished when i hear what you you've done i don't get jealous i get excited because i'm like wow okay if that's what art can do imagine what i can still do imagine where i can still go you know imagine the opportunities that i can not only accept but create you know and even when i was thinking about you <laughs> you building a plane i was like wow you you got the pilot's license so you can fly a plane, but then you created your own opportunity by building your own plane. Right. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit of something about, you know, getting the pilot's license. Uh, you, you know, you go up uh, with an instructor and, you know, it, you fly around with him normally uh, eight to 10 hours and, you know, you land the plane and, you know, he, he kind of helps you out. But then it was like, I was up with him for like, seven days, seven hours or something like that, we make a landing and he jumps out of the plane and he says, okay, your turn, you take it around. And I said, oh my God, hey, <laughs> by myself, I'm gonna do this? And yeah, I, you know, I prayed like hell to God. That <laughs> you know, I made my loop around the airport and <laughs> I landed, <laughs> you know, but it was, the fact that he just jumped out of the plane and says, okay, now you, your turn. It's not that he went in the back seat or something that he could help me. He just got out and says, you go fly it now. So, you know, I guess it was trust on his part and maybe stupidity on my part. But I've done, you know, a lot of things and people, I mean, one of my friends that, that read the book, I saw him yesterday, uh, and he says, I, I, I want to have lunch to you with you. He says, I, I got a lot of questions about why you did all those, quote, stupid, dangerous things in your life. And I said, well, you know, you wouldn't know it by talking to me, but I was born and had been up until my mid-30s a very, very insecure person. And almost everything I did uh, which you would say was risky or taking a chance was really to prove to myself that I could do it. It was a challenge for myself. And I, I faced that challenge because I was insecure, didn't think I could do it, but I had to prove to myself that I could. And that's probably another lesson. And, you know, I, I'm sure there's a lot of insecure people around. And, you know, because they're insecure, they, they can't do it. Well, yeah, but face it as a challenge. Don't face it as a fear. Face it as a challenge. I'm going to prove to myself that I can do it. Okay? And, you know, for me, most of the time, I've done it. You know, some of the times I got hurt. <laughs> but... <laughs> 
I recovered it. I recovered. I, I spent, uh, you know, like after that race car accident, six months in the hospital, I got a motorcycle accident and, you know, a couple of days in the hospital. It looked like I went through a meat grinder and that was after watching. I don't know if you know, uh, you ever heard of Evil Knievel? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> That's immediately what I thought about was Evil Knievel. <laughs> Well, you know, I, we, I was with my wife and we were in Aruba and uh, the movie Evil Knievel was showing uh, one, one of them outdoor theaters and I see this guy going around making all these motorcycle jumps and, you know, doing all kinds of daredevil things. Well, I used to drive my uh, little son uh, to Sunday school on Sunday morning to, uh, on the motorcycle, okay, to sit on the motorcycle and I left him off and... Uh, on the way home, I see all these, you know, curbs, driveways. I'm driving through this little town in Aruba, and I see all these drivers. Hey, oh, oh, oh. he got to start someplace. I'm going to drive up a driveway and just jump off a six-inch curb. I missed the damn driveway. I hit the curb. My motorcycle went five feet into the air. I come down, and I... I looked stupid. I looked around at the people standing outside their houses looking at me. It was this crazy guy. And I was all cut up. And I got on that motorcycle and I drove home. And my wife said, what the hell happened to you? You look like you've been through a meat grinder. Well, can you drive me down to the hospital, please? Yeah, all right. So, I mean, yeah, you do stupid things. You, you, but you try. I tried, okay? I, I wasn't. I wasn't evil can evil. <laughs> so. I love I love it. Oh my goodness, <sighs> podcast listeners. This has been an amazing episode. I'm loving the gems that Art has been dropping. And listen, I want you guys to get a copy of the book. Get the book, read the book, review the book. Make sure that you connect with Art. Art, let them know where they can get the book, the name of the book, and then also how they can connect with you if they're looking for more information. Uh, yeah, the name of the book is As Fate Would Have It, okay? It's on Amazon, and actually to get to it, one of the problems I'm having is it's hard to find. You've got to type in the words As Fate Would Have It. It's also on Barnes & Noble. And I paid a company, I think, $3,000 to uh, get it moved up on that. So they could, if they typed in my name, Mark Dinek, uh, it doesn't show up, okay? You have to type in the words as fate would have it. But of course you can go on Google, just on Google and type in my name, Art Dinick, D-I-N-I-C-K, and it'll come up Art Dinick, uh, as fate would have it. And you can click on that and you'll end up going to the Amazon site and finding it. But, you know, I, I've sold, very few books. I thought I was going to sell a lot more. But, you know, I'll be honest with you, everybody I know that has read it has either uh, enjoyed it because of the, the stories themselves or learned something, okay? So you're either going to like it because it's some enjoyable stories in there and or you, you may learn something about yourself and you're not alone and you know it's uh go on that's it oh my goodness speakeasy podcast listeners remember that this is all for you because without the speakeasy listeners there would be no hashtag speakeasy podcast i appreciate each and every one of you and i heard you say about, you know, talk about the struggles and the things that you've gone through. And I hope this episode is one that will resonate with you. And also one that you'll go back to save it, download it, share it out. Because guess what? We all need that motivation sometimes to just go for it, go for it. Because guess what? It's time for us to be able to elevate in life and in business. This is your host out to these Pelzer. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya. All right, goodbye. Nice being with you for sure.